Hello children. Welcome to the English grammar class. Now let's quickly recapitulate what we have already learned in the previous session. In the previous class we learned definitions of finite verb, non-finite verb, infinitives and bare infinitives. We also learned some uses of infinitives and we also solved few exercises. In this class we will learn how to use infinitive with two word. What do you mean by two? Two means excessive quantity or degree. You can say it as more quantity or degree. The infinitive can also be used after two plus adjective or adverb. For example, the thief ran too fast to be caught. Here, fast is adverb. So after adverb, we have to use infinitives. Now what is the infinitive in the sentence? To be caught is the infinitive in the sentence. Let's take another example. This suitcase is too big to fit into the cupboard. Here, big is an adjective. And to fit is infinitive. Now let's solve C mean. Change the following sentences to 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 pattern. This is the formula children. Subject plus helping verb plus to plus adjective or adverb plus infinitive. We have to solve according to this sentence pattern. This is like a formula always keep this in your mind while solving this exercise so first question is already solved in the textbook so let's start with the second question the questions are very difficult I cannot solve them quickly now we have to use the sentence pattern of formula what is the subject in the sentence the questions is the subject in the sentence. R is the helping verb. Replace very with to. Difficult is an adjective. Now according to the sentence pattern after adjective or adverb we have to use infinitive. Infinitive means to plus base verb. So we have to Take off, I cannot. Instead of that, we have to write to. Now we have to write base verb. What is the base verb here? Sol is the base verb. Here, them we have to omit because them is referred to the question itself. So now the answer is the questions are too difficult to solve quickly. Let's take another example. Ron's dog is so friendly that it will not bite anyone. If you look at the sentence, the sentence is a complex one. We have to convert the complex sentence into simple sentence. Ron's dog. Now what is the subject in the sentence children? Ron's dog is the subject. Is is the helping verb. Replace so with to. Friendly is an adjective. Now we have to use infinitive. So strike off that will not. Use to plus base verb. What is the base verb children here? Bite is the base verb. Now the answer is Ron's dog is too friendly to bite anyone. Fourth question is, your dress is so short for me that I cannot wear it. Answer, your dress is too short for me to wear. Fifth, this problem is so difficult that I cannot solve it. Answer, this problem is too difficult for me to solve. Sixth, I am so excited about my birthday party that I cannot concentrate on anything else. Answer, 
I am too excited about my birthday party to concentrate on anything else. Seventh, the temple is so far that we cannot walk up to it. The temple is too far to walk up to. Well, eighth, when the lights went off, Kitty was very scared. She could not step out of the house. When the lights went off, Kirti was too scared to step out of the house. Now let's solve E mean. Join these sets of sentences using infinitives. First question is already solved in the textbook. So we'll start with the second question. I carry an umbrella. It protects me from rain. If you notice carefully, there are two sentences. I carry an umbrella. It protects me from rain. Now we have to use infinitives to join these set of sentences into one. Answer is I carry an umbrella to protect myself from rain. Here to protect is the infinitive. Third, the farmers are very poor. They cannot pay off their loans. Answer, the farmers are too poor to pay off their loans. Fourth, she speaks the truth. She is not afraid of it. Answer, she is not afraid to speak the truth. Fifth question, Anu is going to Mumbai. She will work in a short film. Answer, Anu is going to Mumbai to work in a short film. Sixth, he should concentrate on his goals and work hard towards it. I advised him. Answer, I advised him to concentrate on his goals and work hard towards it. Seventh, it is very hot today. We should not play outside. Answer. It is too hot today to play outside. Eighth. Ajit quit his job. He wanted to climb mountains. Answer. Ajit quit his job to climb mountains. Next we will discuss about participle. What do you mean by participles? The participles are verb forms that can also act like adjectives. That means participles are not the main verb in the sentence and it doesn't function as verb. Instead, it functions as adjective in the sentence. Participles are of three types. Present participle, past participle and perfect participle. Present participle is formed by adding ing to the verb. Past participle is formed by verbs in third form. Whereas perfect participle is formed by having plus v3, being plus v3, having been plus v3 form. And it indicates completed action. Now let's learn each one of them in detail. First one, present participle which is formed by adding ing to the verb. Generally, present participle is used in continuous tense. Continuous tense can be present, past or future. For example, I am staying in my grandmother's house. I was staying in my grandmother's house. I'll be staying in my grandmother's house. When we use verbless ing without the helping verbs, then it is known as non-finite verb. For example, he sold his working machine. Here, sold is main verb. Working describes the machine. And if you notice carefully, you will not find any helping verb. Hence, it is present participle. Now, let's look into past participle which is formed by using verbs third form. Generally, past participle is used in the perfect tense. Perfect tense can be present, past or future. 
For example, I have given my books to the teacher. I had given my books to the teacher. I will have given my books to the teacher. When we use past participle without the helping verbs, then it is non-finite verb. For example, the cat entered the house through broken window. Here entered is the main verb. Broken is describing the window and it functions as an adjective. Hence, it is past participle. Now, let's understand perfect participle. Perfect participle are created by using having plus verbs third form, being plus verbs third form or having been plus verbs third form. Perfect participle indicates completed action. It can be in active or in passive. For example, having delivered the message, he left immediately. Here, delivering of the message is the first action and it is completed. Whereas, he left immediately is the second action and it has started. Hence, having delivered is perfect participle. Second, having been defeated, he fled away. Here, defeating is the first action and it is completed. Therefore, it is perfect participle. Now, let's learn about gerunds. What is a gerund? When we use a verb in place of a noun, it is called as gerund. Gerund can be formed by adding ing to the verb. Now children, do not confuse gerund with present participle. In present participle, verb acts as an adjective. Whereas in gerund, a verb acts as a noun or a pronoun. In the previous classes, we have discussed about subject and object. Subject can either be a noun or a pronoun. It cannot have any other form. For example, Ravi likes to go to library. In this sentence, Ravi is a subject and it is a noun. He likes to go to library. In this sentence, he is the subject and it is a pronoun. Let's see the third example. Living a happy life takes a lot of effort. Now tell me children, here what is the subject? Living is the subject. Is it a noun or a pronoun? No, it is not a noun or a pronoun. Then what it is? It is a verb. Then how we can use leaving as a subject? Actually, leaving is a verb. But in this sentence, it acts as a noun. Hence, it is a gerund. So, gerund can act as a subject in the sub sentence. Now we will understand how gerund is used as an object. Object can be either a noun or a pronoun. For example, I love playing. Here, playing is used as an object and it is a gerund. My father's favorite hobby is reading. Here, reading is an object and it is a gerund. Now, let's see the difference between Infinitives and gerunds. Infinitives cannot follow a preposition, whereas gerunds can follow a preposition. Infinitives can be used as an indirect object, whereas gerunds cannot be used as an indirect object. Infinitives are used to talk about actions that are momentary. Momentary means last for a very short time. Whereas gerunds are used for actions that were going on but have stopped in the present. So I have completed all the theoretical aspects of this chapter. If you have any doubt, you can clarify the same. Thank you.